Let's learn about what's on the inside of a computer. This is a standard desktop computer and it has a nice and easy lift up lid and let's look at some of the parts inside the computer. First of all, this part right here is where the electricity comes in. This is called the power supply. The power supply converts the alternating current into direct current and the wires come out on this side. We can't really see it though, so let's see if we can take some of this stuff out. Just real quickly as a preview, the CPU is right here, the RAM memory is right there, the hard drive storage is right here, and the optical drive is right here. The main board is the green part inside there. All right, so now let's take a look and see if we can take out a few parts and see what they are. First of all, sometimes when using a computer, you might find that you're running out of storage and you need more storage. You've got so many videos and pictures and things that your storage is all filled out. This is the hard drive. This particular hard drive has 500 gigabytes of storage space. So that's quite a lot, but again, videos can use up a whole lot of storage space. It's possible to have more than one hard drive inside a computer. Or you could replace a hard drive. You could replace a 500 gigabyte one with a one terabyte drive or a two terabyte drive or even a four terabyte drive. There are a lot of choices. You'll notice this drive has two cables connected to it. It has a data cable and it has a power cable. And those two cables are the only two cables really needed to connect it to the computer itself. So I'm going to set that to the side. I'm going to also open up this. This is where the com pack disk drive, actually it's a DVD drive also, let's just call it an optical drive. So this drive has the same couple of ports. It's got a data port just here and it's got a power port right here and this is about how simple it is to actually remove these drives. Um, they might have a couple screws on the side that are holding them in place but for the most part pretty simple to replace the drive. Suppose you had a disk drive, you noticed it wasn't working for whatever reason, you could easily get a new disk drive and put it in. You would have to install some new software though, because hardware only works when it has the correct software. So we'll put that back in there, put the data cable back on, and put the power cable back on. Actually I said those wrong. This is the power cable and this one is the data cable. Now the way we know which cable is which is because we look at the power supply and you'll see out of the power supply there's coming several cables. These are what is powering the computer. So this cable right here, you can see that's going over here into the main board. That's what's powering the main board including the central processing unit. But it's only powering the green board and the things that are really, really connected. Clearly the optical drive has to have its own power, so here's, here's its power cable. And the hard drive, which is up here, has to have its own power, which is right here. Actually, if I look closely enough, I can see that this is not actually the power that goes to the main board, because this larger socket here is the one that provides the power to the main board. So I'm guessing that this is maybe something different. Maybe it's providing power to the video card. Better plug those back in. I want to make sure this computer is still working after we're done here. So, the power comes in to the main board, and from the main board it can go to the drives and whatever else needs power. The data cables, you'll notice the data cables are coming over here. So there's the data cable that is bringing information to the hard drive and from the hard drive back to the main board. There's also a cable here which is going to the optical drive. Inside a computer there is something called memory. Memory is only active when the computer is on. While hard drives work, this 500 gigabyte hard drive will save information. It has information on it right now. Even though the computer is unplugged, the RAM memory only has information in it when the computer is off. Now these cards are super easy to take out with these little white tabs. You just push them apart and then the card kind of slides up a little bit and I'll give you a good look at it. So this is called a memory card. And the memory card 
has some memory chips on it. It looks like it has eight chips. And if you look really closely at the label, it says this is a four gigabyte card. Four gigabytes. That's the random access memory. Now since there are eight chips on there, and there's no chips on the other side, each chip must be half a gigabyte worth of storage. Now you'll notice that this computer has actually, oh, and something important, when you're putting memory into a computer, there's a slot along the edge here. There's probably 64 little metal pins there, maybe 128, 64 on each side. But that little slot shows you how to put it into the computer. So you can see there's the little slot there. You need to put that in just here. And we're going to put it in the same exact slot it was in before. And it snapped. Now, what if I want what if I was noticing my computer was slowing down when I had lots of tabs open or when I was using several programs at the same time? A good thing to try would be to add an identical memory card in the other blue slot. So I'd have to check and see exactly what is this brand, what are all the code numbers on there, buy one exactly the same or find one exactly the same, put it in the blue slot. Could even put in four memory cards instead of one. Then instead of having four gigabytes, we'd have 16 gigabytes of RAM memory. Now the nice thing about RAM memory is it's super fast and it's connected by some wires directly to the central processing unit. So when the central processor needs information, instead of trying to access it all the way through the wires into the optical drive or the hard drive, it can just grab it off the RAM, the random access memory. So right here you'll notice there's a fan. So why is there a fan there? Because underneath the fan and underneath that piece of metal, which is called the heat sink, is the processor, the central processing unit. That does all the calculations and does most, if not all, of the work of the computer. Now some computers will have a second processor just to make the picture on the screen, and that's called a video processor. But for the most part, the central processor is what we consider to be the most important processor. Now you'll notice there's some screws here. The reason there's some screws here is sometimes maybe the fan will stop working, it'll fail, so you could replace the fan. Underneath, sometimes the processor will either stop working or it's just been several years and the processor just isn't as fast as we want. You can buy a new processor that fits in exactly the same spot and then your computer will go faster. But you have to make sure it's exactly the same numbers on that processor, the same type of processor. So for example, if you're getting a Core 7 processor, if that's what's in it right now, then you'd have to replace it with another Core 7 processor. I see some other wires here. Looks like these wires might be the ones that are powering, oh, looks like they're going to the front of the computer. Looks like they're powering this fan in the front. Again, we need to make sure to keep everything cool. The processor will get very, very hot especially if you're using a lot of programs at the same time, or maybe you're doing something like creating a video. That, that uses lots and lots of processor energy. It causes the processor to get very hot. Uh, so there's a fan. There's also a little tiny speaker over here. That's called the Personal Computer Speaker, which is abbreviated PC Speaker. You'll notice there's another heat sink right here. There's probably something else that gets really super hot right underneath there and we could probably push those pins and take it out and see what that is. You'll notice something round right here. This is the clock battery. The clock battery makes sure the clock keeps running. So even though this computer is not plugged in, that clock, there's a clock chip. Maybe it's that little chip right there, and that clock chip keeps the clock running. Well, the battery keeps the clock running. If this computer were unplug unplugged for a long time, like a year or two or maybe more years, Eventually, the battery, of course, would drain and the clock would not be working anymore. That means that every time you turn down the computer, you'd have to reset the clock. Or maybe the computer wouldn't turn on at all, because maybe the clock is required for the computer to turn on. In the back of the computer are the ports where things plug into. You can see that there's some different uh, little boxes where the ports are housed. There's the USB 3s over here and the USB 2 and the network port here. Um, there's also like a video port right there, and there's a display port there. You'll notice over here, there are one, two, three, four expansion slots, and one of the expansion slots is taken up by two more USB ports. 
and those USB ports are plugged into this little spot right here. You might notice these two white slots. Well, suppose you wanted to do some video gaming or do something really, really fast with the computer, like um, video processing, like making videos high definition or ultra high definition. You would maybe put in a brand new card. It would look green like this, and it would be a video card, and it would stick out the back so you could plug in your monitor. A lot of times, people that game on computers will have another video card or even two video cards. There's also two more little black slots. Those can also be used to make more ports on the back of the computer. So maybe there's something you want to add, like maybe you want wireless networking on this computer. Right now it doesn't have any Wi-Fi. But you could add a card that had an antenna on the back and have Wi-Fi in this computer. So there's one, two, three, four slots where you could add something onto the computer. So that's the quick tour of the inside of a computer. Now many of these things can be replaced, and some of them can't be replaced. You could replace the main board if something was wrong with the main board. You could replace the memory, or you could add more memory. You could replace the fan. You could replace the processor. If the um, power supply stopped working, you could replace the power supply. The optical drive, maybe you want to put in a Blu-ray optical drive. Well, you saw how easy it was to put in this optical drive. If you want to replace the hard drive and put in a hard drive that has more capacity, you can see that would be pretty simple to do. Maybe one of the fans is burned out. You could replace the fan on the front of the computer. And, of course, you could even add stuff to the computer, like adding more ports on the back. So these computers are called expandable. It's not like a phone or a tablet computer, where usually the only thing you can expand is maybe adding a little more storage, like a memory card. The desktop computers have lots of space where you can upgrade them so that they can do more things than they did when you originally purchased them. And you can re easily replace things yourself if they go bad. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the inside of the computer. Uh, to help you remember this, maybe you want to take a picture of the inside of the computer and label all the parts. That might help you remember. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this a lot.